Okay, so Steve Buscemi, what if he never auditioned? So presumably there's a bit of a story around Steve Buscemi getting the role. So what's mm. happening there? So what many do not know is Quentin Tarantino, director of Reservoir Dogs, appearing in Reservoir Dogs as Mr. Brown, who is the one who has the interesting interpretation of Madonna's Like a Virgin. He originally wrote and intended to play the part of Mr. Pink, which is Steve Buscemi's character in Reservoir Dogs himself. He wanted to give other actors the chance to play the character, but really had himself in mind, obviously. He is a trained actor. He'd done some acting before this first. Elvis impersonator. Yep. <laughs> yes, very true. On a TV show, he, he did it once. Yeah. He has appeared. Really? Before. Can't remember what show. It might I mean, be. I need to see that. It might be. Ah, oh, this is killing me. You know, Cheers spun off something. It might be Frasier, maybe. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, fact check that. <laughs> that's probably that's wrong. At one hundred, <laughs> there is a ninety-five percent chance that's wrong. That's not being cut. Tarantino, <laughs> but listen, listen here, Jambo. He wanted to play Mr. Pink, all right? <laughs> Am I stalling here or something? Uh, he wanted to play Mr. Pink, but he also wanted to give other actors the chance to audition, which was a good move because he's not a very good actor. <laughs> 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 when when Steve Buscemi came to into audition, Tarantino told him that he had to have a killer audition in order to steal this part away. I think we both agree. He's incredible. Is he the best performance in this? I mean, he was unbelievable. I mentioned it in the review. There are two for me. Buscemi and Madsen. But, yeah, okay. But Madsen definitely has a cooler, a, a more interesting part i'd say yeah and I, I would even yeah and i would say that is enough what you've just said there to convince me that i do think i prefer buscemi's i think he does it does more with less he's just i tell you i was trying to figure out why i like buscemi so much and i think part of the reason is because uh, appearance wise he's so unassuming mm. and yet the way he carries himself is yeah. very kind of self-assured and quite direct and it's confident. very true that isn't it and it's but, so mesmerizing because you know he was a firefighter maybe it's something to right. do with that in real life because he actually helped out on 9-11 when really 9-11 happened he actually came to his local fire station and said hey can i can i help out that's it's like so a proper cool. proper geezer god um, i love the guy i thought he was amazing in this i loved his role but i do think that it was buscemi that made it like, I could see a lot of other actors doing a naff job of that. Including Quentin. And yeah. funny, <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny, though? Yeah. Now that I think about it, the way Buscemi's character, Mr. Pink, the neuroticism, the zaniness, the kind of scatty nature. Yes. Finding out that Tarantino wrote it for himself, it is definitely the character that is most suited to his just, like, wild. Yeah. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, it's, Steve Buscemi is just unbelievable in it. And you know what? It was one of his first proper performances. A breakthrough, as as breakthrough role, really, wasn't it? He did this and then Fargo was quite a bit later. So was it? that's another question then. Let's say Buscemi doesn't come in, doesn't mm -hmm. audition. Yep. Doesn't land the part. How does that affect cinema history? I actually think that Reservoir Dogs would not have had the impact it would have had. Let's assume that Tarantino would have given himself the role in the end. You see, the only person stopping Quentin Tarantino from Tarantinoing yeah. all over. And and let and and to be fair to that statement, that assumption, he gave it to Steve Buscemi. He is perfect for the role. No mm. one else could have done it like Steve Buscemi. So let's assume that nobody else turned up and did the audition like yeah. that. Tarantino takes the role. That's his feature, his first feature film. So we, the, the hard influence on cinema following it of the nonlinear narrative of the violence of the dialogue, all the stuff that nowadays we take inspiration from Tarantino, from things that Tarantino really pioneered mm. wouldn't have, wouldn't be the same. It would just have delayed that whole process. Maybe eventually it would have happened, but we'd be years and years back. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, here's one thought. People see this film and see an egocentric director who puts himself in it and isn't very good at acting and see it as a missed opportunity of, this could be quite good if he wasn't in it, just hamming it up with poor acting choices. 
and maybe he never kicks on beyond that. Mm. Yeah. So it might not just change the the career of Steve Buscemi. He might have to go back to being a firefighter. Maybe our whole understanding of cinema, the effect, the the ripple effect of Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs is not felt in the nineties. Yes. We don't have like gangsters that will have conversations about Big Macs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. The dialogue, scenes. It, it didn't happen before. It's it, the first time where like, Tar- look, Tarantino, whether you are a cinema buff who like him or don't, he has had probably the bi- one of the biggest impact, maybe top three biggest impact on cinema in the last 10, 20 years. Big time. Since he came out, no one has had a bigger impact, I'd say. And if I write dialogue... I will start by looking at what he does so well. And mm. I'm sure that anybody else writing screenplays probably has looked at Tarantino's dialogue and thought like, what is it that's so so magical about this? Mm. I feel like every single film, even if it doesn't represent Tarantino in any way whatsoever, probably is inspired by Tarantino's art. And it starts with his success on Reservoir Dogs, uh, which probably wouldn't have happened if he played Mr. Pink. No. Because who the fuck would watch that? Because <laughs> he's insufferable to watch on screen. <laughs> and you know what? All the films that he has been in a lead role, so Four Rooms, mm-hmm. critically panned. I don't know if it was critically panned, but it didn't do very well. No Reservoir Dogs. No. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn... Again, didn't really make any wave at all. He, you know what, actually, we should give him massive credit because he obviously can't tell that he's not very good at acting and yet he still was able to see. Yeah. Because it would have had a a massively negative effect on, we'd be living in a different timeline. We'd be going from an exceptional performance, Mm. not down to a neutral performance, but to a ter- like it would it would take a central character from exceptional to terrible. Mm. That distance between Buscemi's Mr. Pink against what Tarantino's Mr. Pink, the film <laughs> just would not have been the same. Like not even close. Yeah, and it genuinely would have adversely affected the popularity of that film to an extent which could be immeasurable on cinema history. And would Tarantino have managed to I think probably but would he have managed to create the career that he has currently got if Reservoir Dogs flopped because he killed it? As in, he ruined it? <laughs> Probably eventually, but I think that there's a massive delay there because funding and things like that. Pulp Fiction was really on the back of the success of Reservoir Dogs. Right, exactly. So, so maybe he would have still tried to write Pulp Fiction, but how the he- like part of the thing that differentiates Reservoir Dogs so much from Pulp Fiction is the budget. Like mm. it's... Would Pulp Fiction have worked with a $1.5 million budget if he could have got that? If if Reservoir Dogs died, like just didn't go anywhere because people didn't like the ultraviolence and, and, and the mm. non-linear narrative and all the stuff that he brought new and they hated the main performance, would he have managed to make Pulp Fiction? And if you see like success as a series of just lucky breaks and like, you know on different days yeah this could have happened versus this on different days Seth MacFarlane was supposed to be on the plane to that went into the Twin Towers yes. you know things like that where yeah. he, just, he missed his plane kind of fate yeah so if Buscemi never turned up if Buscemi never turned up maybe Tarantino just doesn't make it maybe it just is a, a, a failed yeah. independent film that never got running with so, a bad with a bad <laughs> performance from one of the trunks yeah. Tritagonist. T- I heard that tri- term. Yeah, yeah. Tri- Tritagonist. Was it like, Tritagonist? I didn't Google it. I was like, Fred will know. <laughs> um, so just to clarify, then, mm. Steve Buscemi doesn't turn up. Nobody else is as good as Steve Buscemi for Mr. Pink. Yep. Tarantino takes Mr. Pink. Reservoir Dogs flops. Tarantino mm. can't make subsequent films because he or it takes him an incredibly long time to ever get that momentum to get the funding to make things like Pulp Fiction again. Yeah. Tarantino never takes off and. Literally every single film today that will have taken some inspiration, if not directly from Tarantino's work, indirectly, mm. won't have had that inspiring factor. Steve Buscemi not going Steve to that role wouldn't... changed cinema forever. Steve, Steve Buscemi doesn't make it, let's say as well. Chuck that in there. Yeah, why not? Steve yeah, why... <laughs> and I tell you what, Maximus's family still die. Yeah, Maximus' family always dies. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Nice, thank you.